Welcome to another episode of Talks for a Magical Monday, the weekly podcast of the Heralds of the Gospel. I'm your host, Brother Gustavo. For those who are not familiar with the Heralds, the Heralds of the Gospel are a community active in the Catholic Archdiocese of Toronto, as well as several other cities across Canada. Founded by Monsignor Jean Cladias, the Heralds comprise priests, religious, brothers and sisters, and lay people since their pontifical recognition in 2001 by Pope John Paul II. And for those who are familiar with the Heralds, this podcast features the talks following the Heralds' weekly rosary at St. Patrick's Parish in Schomburg, Ontario, where the brothers share some consoling and encouraging thoughts precisely geared to those dreaded beginnings of a probably hard week called Mondays. If you want to know more about the origin of the podcast, please stop right here. Go back and listen to episode number one. So even if today it's not Monday, but you're still commuting or doing chores, take heart brighten your perspectives and enjoy today's talk recorded at the Heralds of the Gospel House in Schomburg. The topic, the little, the wise and the learned. Who is who in Jesus' eyes? Welcome then to Talks for a Magical Monday, the weekly podcast of the Heralds of the Gospel. If you have not got a copy of this book, I recommend it highly, are the commentaries on the Gospels by our founder. Monsignor Jean Cla. And he has immense treasures, explanations. It's called New Insights on the Gospels, not because nobody commented on these things, actually, people did, but it's because he's always bringing commentaries that are not that extended, they're not that common, and he actually adds many of his own that are really beautiful. And since we have a, a previous uh, podcast in Spanish and so on, I'm going just to use the same. Uh, the same line, right? At least to contribute something for our meditation tonight. We are here in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Our Lord is in body, soul, blood and divinity. And if we are going to pay attention, he is as present as he was in Israel, as he was in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. So sometimes we tend, tend to think that, oh, how beautiful it would be if I could go to the lake of Genesaret, right, or to be there in Jericho when our Lord was curing people. And we tend to forget. And when our Lord is exposed, he's as present as he was at that time. And uh, I'm going to borrow the upcoming gospel because it's going to prepare us for Saturday and Sunday. And also it's a beautiful meditation about how our Lord reveals himself. And when he says here, in, in the gospel, he says, At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. So there are secrets that God and Jesus, our Lord, only re reveals to the ones that are little. And so I think it's very good for our meditation tonight to identify these two people. Who are the wise and the learned? And who are the little, according to what Jesus has to say? Here, Monsignor Zoncla has a fantastic explanation. He says, the wise are generally taken to be those who acquire life experience. So all those who, through their life experience, they can foresee things, they have been through things, and they have some wisdom that seems to be superior. And if you're going to pay attention, there is also another bunch, which is the learned, those who dedicate themselves to higher studies. There are some people who want to know every single rule in the book so they can rule somebody else's life. They want to learn every single law in the, in the book so they can dominate everybody according to their own caprices and to their own passions and everything else. To those, God does not reveal himself. And it's fascinating, because if you're going to pay attention, <laughs> these are the ones, the wise and the learned, that knew the Old Testament, knew all the books, knew all the Bibles, everything perfectly. And how come? 
the Messiah comes in front of them and for them is nothing. Because God, Jesus, did not want to reveal himself to them. And why? Because they were puffed up with their knowledge, with their rules, with their pretense, with their pretend knowledge of something higher. But it's funny, right? Because they are so puffed up that they are not interested in practicing what they learn. They only use what they learn to oppress others, to make other people's life unbearable. But for themselves, there is never a true application of what they say. These people created 613 extra laws for everybody to follow. And they probably found 614 rules to get out of the 613, you see? But for those who are so puffed up and so on, God does not reveal himself. And so let's make a quick examination of conscience. We have here our Lord present. And this is a meditation. So if there is something of this on us, let's ask our Lord to immediately get rid of it. It's going to be impossible if there we have something of this, impossible for ourselves. Because for ourselves, nothing is possible unless the grace of God. Unless Jesus gives us the basis he only can give, we won't be able to get rid of this, uh, how do you call this? I don't know, it's a, it's, a, it's a root that is evil, right? Because deep down makes us blind. And this is what happened to all those who are the wise and the learned. They should have recognized our Lord immediately, and they did it. And let's ask, because sometimes God may grant us graces, many graces, and we're not able to see them. And why? Maybe because of this. Maybe we think we are somebody special, or we know already so much, or many other things that make us to be puffed up. And then as a result, when God wants to eventually reveal a grace and so on, we just become like marble. You know, marble sometimes is funny. When you put marble on the, on the rain, our founder, Monsignor Sean Clavier, says now, it's like, you know, like those people who never accept the graces. It's like the water that never penetrates the marble, right? If, even if you put them under a rain storm, the water doesn't get inside the marble. This may happen to us. But again, nothing is impossible for God. So we are here in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Let's ask God to free us from this misconception. But there is also something else. And our Lord talks about the little ones. Now, the little ones doesn't mean that we have to be totally ignorant. Doesn't mean that we don't have to study. Doesn't mean that we don't have to learn. No. But we always have to learn with love. Because if we don't learn with love, then we follow into the other side. Into the wise and into the learned that there's nothing wrong to know. Knowing, being wise is fantastic, as long as we do that for the love of God and not for the love of oneself. Now, there is something more here. And, of course, we cannot avoid thinking about Our Lady. Our Lady, imagine, she's someone who never said no to a single grace she received. From the moment of her conception until the moment when she was assumed into heaven. So the reason by which Our Lady received so many graces from God and the reason by which Our Lady was able to know so many secrets from divine providence was not because she was a wise or a learned, but because she was little in the good sense. To talk about Our Lady and to talk about humility, I think, you know, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. But there is another aspect of this, which is how, because of her unfathomable love, she was able to understand the deepest truths that God could reveal. Why? Because God reveals himself to the little ones. And here he says, All these things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal. So there are things that are that belong to the revelation. Only God could have come and, to, and tell us. There are secrets that he only told 
donate it. Why? Because out of all human beings, she is the one that possess this degree of humility and this degree of love to the highest degree. And as a result, God revealed to her. But talking about humility, there are obstacles to humility. And someone would say, well, vainglory, um, I'm a show-offish person. I like just to, wherever I go, um, I tend to pretend that all cameras in the world are in front of me and everybody's paying attention to me. Those are applications. But if we're going to use a very interesting word, it's <laughs> protagonism. You know, when the person thinks that the person is it, is the center of everyone's attention. Wherever the person goes, uh, he has to tell everybody what they have to think, what they have to do, and how they have to act. Because they think they are the center of everything. That's a problem, because that becomes an obstacle. So when God wants to reveal and wants to give graces, because of that attitude, that attitude closes down, if we could say, closes down the heart of God, not because he doesn't want to give, but it's because of our attitude that disables him to give what he would like. And we're here in front of the Blessed Sacrament again. And... How many times we can make an examination of conscience and how many times we have been in our mind, the main character, the center of the world and of the universe. If it happened in the past, it may happen in the future. Let's ask our Lord here present in the Blessed Sacrament to help us to be to, to get rid of this horrible vice. And I would like to finish with a last point, which is something very encouraging. Our Lord says, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Why are we so tired? Why are we so tired sometimes? The answer could be that we are spending so much energy into trying to be the center of everything, rather than allowing God to be the center of everything. And we are just one of those characters secondary characters, when we do that, we come to rest. There is a new meaning here. He says, come to me, all you who labor and burden, and I will give you rest. He doesn't say, no, uh, come to me, all those who want to be the center of the world, and I'm going to, no, no, no. Come to me, and then I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourself. So this weariness of soul here, Monsignor Carmen John Class says, the weariness of soul comes from this inordinate, totally unbalanced impulse we have sometimes to become the center of everything. If this attitude has become so such a secondary, such a second nature within ourselves, again, not by the power of will not by the power of our, our own uh, decisions and our own, uh, I don't know, capability to do push-ups and sit-ups with our soul, right? That's not going to come. It's going to come through the grace. St. Thomas Aquinas used to say that he never learned as much as in front of the Blessed Sacrament. So if we want to get rid of all of this, let's come to the Blessed Sacrament. Let's ask Jesus to help us to free ourselves from these things. And in turn, we're going to experience that he's going to reveal himself to us. I'll leave you some 10 minutes for this uh, meditation. Again, what is a meditation? Is to talk with Jesus here, present in the Blessed Sacrament, to talk one-on-one. -on -one. So we leave you some time for that. And remember, what do we have to do? We have to talk to him. And what we have to do, we have to ask for everything absolutely everything and more, specifically in, the, in those points, so that we can experience a true peace of soul that can only be given by And this is all for today's episode recorded live at the Heralds of the Gospel House in Schomburg, Ontario. You can reach us anytime at one of the Heralds' websites, such as heralds.ca, 
forward slash podcast, new insights multimedia forward slash podcast, or you can also subscribe on iTunes or anywhere you normally listen to your favorite podcast. And as per now, pray hard, work hard, keep growing in devotion to the Eucharist and our Blessed Mother, evangelize by word and example, and be every day more and more a real herald of the gospel. Oh, 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 oh,